In this part of the lesson, we'll look at how we can declare parameters which accept references to objects rather than just simple values like text and numbers. Let's start by opening the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and we can click the Enable Content button when the file's loaded, and we're back to this silly little game that we created in an earlier module. You can play the game by clicking the Play button and generate different random scores, and what we're going to do is head into the Developer tab and then the Visual Basic Editor, and then we're going to start breaking up this single large subroutine called Roll Again into a number of different procedures which need to accept references to the player cells that we're changing. We'll begin by creating a subroutine that will deal with resetting the game. So that's going to involve setting the player's scores back to zero, changing the background colors back to gray, and then clearing the contents of the description cells. Let's head down to the bottom of the module and declare a new subroutine called Reset Game. Now this subroutine is going to require references to the two cells involved, player1 and player2. So let's declare some parameters in the definition of this subroutine. I'm going to call my first one P1 cell as, and then just in the same way we declared data types for the parameters in the previous part of the lesson, we can use any object type or object class when we declare parameters which accept references to objects. So in this case, the class of object we're accepting a reference to will be a range. We can then type in a comma and declare a second parameter, let's call it P2 cell, and this will also be as a range. We can now return to the main procedure and cut the six lines of code that we're interested in. So this begins with player one cell dot value equals zero, and then ends with player two cell dot offset one comma zero dot clear contents. We can cut those six lines with control and X, and then we can go back to the reset game procedure and paste those six lines in. All we need to do then is update the names of the variables that we were referencing previously with the names of the parameters that we've declared for this subroutine. So we've got P1 cell and P2 cell rather than player1 cell and player2 cell. So it won't take too long to do this. Probably a bit of copy and paste would help or a find replace, which we could have used to do that slightly more quickly. But there we go. There's the, the reset game procedure created. Now we can return to the main role again procedure and make a call to the reset game procedure passing references to player one and player two cells. So let's scroll back up to the top where we cut our code previously. And then in the IntelliSense list, we can find the reset game procedure. If we then type in a space, just as we've seen in previous parts of this module, you can see that you get a tooltip appearing, listing out the parameters that you need to pass either a value or a reference to. So this time we need to pass references to range objects. We have those captured already in variables called player one cell and player two cell. So unsurprisingly, I'm going to refer to player one cell followed by a comma and then player two cell. So if I can type in player two cell, there we go. All right, so there's a call to the reset game procedure passing references to player one and player two cells. We can carry on using that same technique to create as many separate procedures as we like. Let's have another procedure which deals with generating new scores. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this module and then let's have a new subroutine called generate scores. So I'll call this one sub generate scores. Again, I need to pass in references to the two cells in which the scores will be generated. So what I can do here actually is quickly copy and paste the parameter list that I declared for my reset game procedure. If I paste that in and then close the parentheses and hit enter. Although these parameters have the same names in different procedures, that's absolutely acceptable because these parameters will only be ever be accessible from within the subroutine. I don't need to worry about what they're called, even if the names match, that's absolutely fine. What I can then do is head back up to the main procedure, the roll again procedure, and identify the code that I want to put into my new generate scores procedure. So that's these two instructions. I can then cut that and then head back down to the generate scores procedure and then paste those two lines of code in. Again, I just need to update the references to the variables previously to the appropriate parameters. So P1 cell and P2 cell. Finally, I can return to the main role again procedure and make a call to the generate scores procedure. Type in a space and I can see the tooltip that appears. 
I now need to pass in references to player one cell and player two cell. So once again, let's just copy and paste those references. We should, of course, make sure that our game still works despite all the changes we've made to the code. Let's head back to the Excel window and then just try playing the game again and make sure that we see the same sorts of results as we would expect. So that all seems to be working perfectly. So at this point, you're welcome to continue with the extra practice session at the end of this part of the lesson, just to gain some more experience with declaring parameters. Alternatively, you can move on to the next lesson in this module, which starts to explain how you can write and call functions.